Being a skeptic doesn't mean that you don't find the paranormal interesting or that you don't have an emotional reaction to it. After all, I'm the guy who thinks that television went into a decline when The X-Files was cancelled. I'd love to spend a night in a haunted house, but the problem is that I'm kind of a coward, so if something untoward happened, I'd probably piss my pants and then have a stroke. So I'd be a good guy to have along from a scientific and rational perspective, but a bad guy to have along with respect to laundromat charges and hospital fees. I still recall the ghost stories from my childhood. My uncle was a grand storyteller and used to tell us kids stories in French about the loup-garou, which is the Cajun version of a werewolf, and the feu follet, which is the spirit fire or will of the wisp, who if it caught you in the forest would chase you and if it touched you, it would steal your soul, unless you happened to be able to cross running water first. Later, I voraciously read Poe and Lovecraft and books with names like 20 True Tales of Terror, and it had a great influence on my own writing. It was in one of the latter kind of books that I ran into the story of Lord Dufferin, who was a real person. He was a British statesman who went from England to Russia to Syria to Burma back in the 19th century. His full name was Frederick Hamilton Temple Blackwood, first Marquess of Dufferin, and he lived a life that coincided almost exactly with the same years of Queen Victoria's life. She lived from 1819 to 1901, and Dufferin from 1826 to 1902. Dufferin was, by all accounts, well known in the social circles of the upper crust. His biographer calls him imaginative, warm-hearted, sympathetic, and gloriously versatile. He was also a great storyteller, mostly based on one story that he told till his dying day, and he swore it was true. One night, Dufferin said, he was staying with a friend who had an estate in Ireland. It was a hot night, and he was restless, couldn't sleep. So finally he got up and went out through the sliding glass door onto the balcony that overlooked the estate gardens. He noticed something moving down there, and upon looking more closely, he saw that it was a man carrying something on his back. When he looked closer still, he saw that what the man was carrying was a coffin. Then the man stepped out into a patch of moonlight and looked directly up into Lord Dufferin's face. The man, Dufferin said, had the most hideously ugly face he had ever seen in his life. The next morning, Dufferin told his host about the incident. The host laughed and said, you must have had a nightmare. Dufferin agreed and proceeded to sort of forget about the incident. But many years later, when he was the British ambassador to France in the 1890s, he was in Paris for a diplomatic meeting. And he was approaching the elevator, and when the elevator door opened, he saw that the elevator operator was the same memorable, hideously ugly face that he'd seen many years ago on the estate in Ireland. Terrified, he backed up and the doors closed. The elevator proceeded up without him, and then there was a tremendous crash. The elevator cable had broken, sending the elevator plummeting down several stories. Everybody aboard was killed, including the elevator operator. Dufferin was curious and asked the hotel management about the guy, and they said they didn't know much about him. He'd just been hired that day. Dufferin lived another 10 years, and told this story over a glass of brandy many, many times, terrifying the absolute shit out of his friends. It had all the elements, didn't it? A scary specter in a garden, and then later running across the same guy, and then a near brush with death. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think the supernatural aspects of this story are true. Human memory is a remarkably plastic thing, and I think most cases of alleged precognition have to do with an imperfect recollection of the original phenomenon, be it a dream or in this case, a vision. That Dufferin saw something in the garden is certainly possible. That he had a nightmare is also possible. That it was true precognition, I seriously doubt. What I think is more likely is that the shock of seeing a hideously ugly man as the elevator operator conflated with his previous vision of something moving across the garden and mixed the two together so convincingly that he thought that that was what actually happened. But you have to admit, it makes a hell of a good story, doesn't it? I think even a skeptic sharing a glass of brandy with a friend on a dark and stormy night, might have a twang of fear go up their backbone at hearing it. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Our resources are down there, and please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.